My husband paid for his own funeral. I used a local funeral home for his cremation and funeral. They didn't take life insurance. It had to be paid up front. So, I used what I thought was our credit card. I called to have his name removed. I was told that I was just a user and he was the owner. I asked to have the card in my name. She told me I was just a user and couldn't own the card. This isn't true. Any credit card will let you assume ownership and be responsible for the bill in the US. So, not one to argue. I just let it go. I never got a bill, letter, anything. So, that's how my late husband paid for his own funeral. Edit. I tried to take ownership. The bank wouldn't let me. The attorney told me not to pay it. The bank could have sued the estate. But they would have had to establish an estate and then sue it. Also, this is a huge multinational bank. They have never bothered to collect any of the money. If they start bothering you for payment, tell them that you are just a user and not the owner that they need to contact the owner for payment and any further contact from them will be considered harassment. They will have to bill the estate for their payment. And if they wait until the estate clears probate, they will have to write it all off. I work for PNC and basically if you aren't a primary or secondary, you get nothing. It's actually a rule in place meant to protect against DV or other abuse. It can be frustrating when a daughter calls to pay their mom's bill just to find out that they can't. But when the ex calls to figure out where a recent purchase was. Despite having all the correct information. They get nothing. Edit. Whoa. Some of you asked and figured I'd put it here. We have a probate department to handle the if someone dies question. People have the option to put on their account that someone is authorized to talk to or POA. It's just like going to the doctor and authorizing who can have information. Checking accounts are easier. But when it comes to credit cards, that's where it gets complicated. Not exactly in the MC vein. However, my grandma paid for her own funeral as well. She picked out the casket she wanted. Flowers that would be laid. Caterer and the food we'd eat. Etc. I couldn't help but laugh when the funeral home apologized because the casket she requested had been discontinued so we'd have to go with another. The thought that she didn't want us to have to take care of her and she was still taking care of us was so damn grandma-ish. My dad had paid in full for his plot in the family cemetery. Had paid the funeral home in full. We couldn't find the receipts, the funeral home had changed hands and denied that he had paid. Guess who ended up paying? Thanks for the life tip. Hopefully you never get a bill. Funerals are too damn expensive. My family had to pound pavement for two weeks to mom's funeral going and we didn't have enough to bury her like she wanted. Raised like $4,000 in two weeks. When I die, throw me in the trash. Check your credit report. My spouse passed 15 years ago within a few days of her CC charging her annual fee. I was just a user. Jump through their hoops to prove she passed and I was promised the annual fee was removed. It was the only balance. They closed the account. A year later I was denied a new card elsewhere. Seems the charge was not removed and the debt was reported on my credit even though it was her account. Got it cleared from my credit and I'll never do business with Citibank again. My grandfather was friends with the funeral homeowner in his town and they set it all up ahead of time. Arranged to sell his house upon his death too. Really saved us a lot of trouble. He was a thoughtful man. I went through something similar when my husband died. I was the executor of his estate and wanted to use reward points toward the bill. The credit card company had set the account up in their own way with me as an authorized user not as co-owner as we had requested. They got to write off over $3,000.
and the company would not even discuss anything with me. Rather I was transferred to an outside company which closed the account. My husband had one other credit card where I was an authorized user and this company had a totally different attitude. They expressed sympathy and asked if I would like the account transferred to my name and has that all done in under five minutes. I still have an account with credit card company number two. Really they are a great company. And after receiving bi-monthly requests from the first company to get a credit card through them I had to threaten them with reporting them to authorities for harassment since I had sent them written notice to never contact me again. That took almost two years to get them to stop. My mom. When I die. Don't make a fuss. Just dig a hole and put me in the ground. Me. Wait a sec. Dig a hole? I thought you said don't make a fuss? Quote. I contacted a company to let them know my father had died and to pay any outstanding bills. I didn't even get as far as presenting his death certificate because they said, they could only speak to the account holder. Well, okay then if that is how you wanna play it. They kept sending increasingly frantic letters to his house. And for each letter I wrote back as the executor asking them to put in a claim off the estate. Finally they decided to send me a letter where they now decided I was personally responsible for his dead and threaded court, balifs, credit ratings etc. I don't take kindly to threats. So I had great pleasure informing them they were now beyond the time limit to make a claim. Six months in the UK. And basically told them to go pound sand. After my husband died I went and made my final arrangements with the Neptune Society. They will pick you up wherever you died cremate you and put you in an urn already delivered and waiting in my garage. I also did a will. Power of attorney and advance directives and put them in an envelope and gave it to my son. I have lost two husbands and I wish I had those thing available when I could barely think. My mom organized what she wanted. I had a term deposit that we called her planting money. She knew what songs etc. she wanted. She was to be buried in a family plat 60 miles away. For months she was asking me if I'd organized a minibus to take everyone there. She was on to it for months. In the end I told her I couldn't organize it until she gave me a date. That kept her quiet. We did end up organizing a stretch hummer with catering. She would have enjoyed it. My husband and I have prepaid our funerals. We are having a bear cremation, a company in Australia that does that for not a lot of money. And our family knows just to have a party on us. Credit card companies are full of shit with stuff like this. After my mother died I called her credit card company and informed them. Sent them a copy of her death certificate and proof that they would be paid once her house was sold. A few months later I got a call on my mobile asking to speak to my mother. I told them that she had passed away and that they had already been informed and given proof etc. And they told me they had absolutely no record of that. I asked them how. If they had no record. Did they happen to have my phone number as the point of contact instead of hers? I am going to prepay for a cremation from a cremation company and not a funeral home. And a simple urn. About 1000 to 1200.00 currently. Then no service but simply a party to celebrate my life. No speeches. No memorials. No flowers. Just toasts. Good food and drink. Give the urn to the veterans cemetery to bury me there with no service. Any credit card will let you assume ownership and be responsible for the bill in the US. This statement is definitely not true at all banks. Maybe some. The funeral parlor guys in a community always set themselves up as wonderful pillars of the community. They are worst vultures you will ever run into. The entire funeral industry in the USA is the greediest pack of low-life thieves there is. 
Check them out. It's actually not true that a credit card will just let you take over as a user. It's a credit application and the debt is legally bound to the one who owes it. Condolences on the passing of your husband. If your policy has a freedom of choice option, they pay out in as little as 72 hours. With options to just pay the funeral place directly. Average cost of a burial. $15,000 USD average cost of a cremation. $7,500 USD. If you have loved ones, you need to plan for this. A shocking amount of people go into debt just trying to bury, cremate a family member. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.